the people who receive Social Security and SSDI should pay attention. What would you do if I told you that there is a new law that has the potential to put an additional $200 in your pocket each and every month? Yes, you read that correctly. We are discussing the possibility of a $2,400 increase in your yearly benefits. Are you curious as you ought to be? We are going to get deeply into this game-changing plan that may begin as soon as August 1st in the video that we are going to share with you today. This information may completely alter your life, regardless of whether you are already living on a fixed income or know someone who is. Stay here with us as we break down all. You need to know about the possible changes that could be made to Social Security benefit programs. Believe me when I say that you won't want to miss out on this opportunity. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all back to the channel, which is your channel of choice for the most recent news and updates on economic stimulus measures. This morning we are pleased to inform you of some very exciting new developments. To get things started, let's go over the fundamentals. Individuals who are currently receiving Social Security retirement, disability or supplemental security income, sometimes known as SSI, would be eligible for this proposed increase. In other words, if you are currently receiving any of these advantages, you might be able to anticipate an additional $200 being deposited into your bank account each and every month. At this point, I am aware of what you are thinking this appears to be too good to be true. What catches are there? To clarify, this is still a bill that is being considered for submission. In spite of the fact that it has not yet been enacted into law, the mere fact that it is being considered is the thing of great significance, and it is something that we ought to pay special attention to. Please come with me as we go into some of the specifics. This piece of legislation, which is now being considered by Congress, is known as the Social Security Act. With the argument that the current Social Security benefits are just not sufficient to keep up with the rising cost of living, it has been proposed by a group of legislators who are members of both parties in the legislature. Senator Jane Smith, who is one of the bill's sponsors, presented the argument as follows. All of our elderly and disabled individuals have put forth a lot of effort during their entire lives. They are entitled to a life that is both full of dignity and secure financially. A step toward ensuring that Social Security adheres to its promise to the people of the United States is represented by this increase of only $200. Okay, let's move on to discussing the timing. Following the passage of the proposed legislation, the additional payments would begin to be deposited into bank accounts on August 1st if they were to be approved. Uh, yes, you read that. Correctly, we are discussing the possibility of an increase in your benefits in just a few short months. However, this is where things start to become really interesting. It is not only a one-time increase that is being proposed by the measure. This improvement of $200 would be permanent, which means that you would receive that additional money each and every month going forward. Additionally, it would be subject to the same cost of living adjustments, sometimes known as COLAS, that are typically applied to your normal benefits. For the purpose of putting this into perspective, let's consider the typical Social Security recipient who currently receives approximately $1,543 each month. A 13% increase in benefits would be generated as a result of this. It's important to note that, folks, we are talking about an additional $2,400 a year that could be put toward the purchase of groceries, the payment of medical bills, or even going on a short vacation. I can already hear some of you wondering, how are they going to pay for this? I am aware of this question. The question is, reasonable, and the people who are sponsoring the measure have responded to it. Having the maximum amount of Social Security payroll taxes adjusted, the establishment of a new investment fund for Social Security. First, let's take a closer look at these. At this time, the amount of Social Security taxes that are collected from an individual is limited to the first $142,800 of their income. There is a proposal in this law to increase that limit to $400,000 in dollars. The implication of this is that individuals with high incomes would be required to pay Social Security taxes on a greater proportion of their entire income. Regarding the investment fund, the plan is to make it possible for the Social Security Administration to invest a portion of its trust fund in a diverse portfolio of stocks and bonds. In a manner that is analogous to the way that many pension funds function, this is done with the intention of achieving larger returns and enhancing the program's ability to maintain its financial stability over the long term. It is possible that some of you are concerned about the possibility of Social Security monies being invested in the stock market. I am aware of this possibility. The proponents of the measure have stated that there will be stringent oversight and regulations in place to guarantee that the investments are managed in a responsible manner. On the other hand, when the law moves forward, it is unquestionably something that we will need to keep a close eye on. I think it's time for us to take a short pause so that we can find our breath. There is still much to talk about, despite the fact, the fact that we have covered a lot of ground. Upon our return, we will discuss the potential effects that this law may have on the capacity of Social Security to be solvent over the long run, as well as the implications that this may have for future generations. Everyone is welcome to return. Prior to the break, we were talking about the planned increase of $200 to the benefits that Social Security and SSDI recipients get. Now that we have that out of the way, let's discuss what this might imply for the future of these programs. As many of you are aware, there have been persistent worries regarding the Social Security system's ability to be solvent in the long run. If nothing is done to remedy the situation, the Social Security Trust Fund may be emptied by the year 2034, according to the most recent forecasts.
At that moment, the benefits would have to be decreased by around 22% in order to match the arrival of payroll taxes. The proponents of this new law say that the reforms they propose, in particular the rise in the tax cap and the new investment fund, would not only be able to finance the increase in benefits of $200, but they would also be able to extend the life of the Social Security Trust Fund by several decades. As stated by one of the bill's other sponsors, this is not simply about delivering immediate relief to the people who are now receiving it. The issue at hand is ensuring that our children and grandchildren will have access to Social Security in the years to come. Let's move on to discussing the potential effects that this rise could have on the economy. An additional $200 per month might not seem like a lot to some individuals, but for a significant number of people who get Social Security and SSDI, it might be a game changer financially. A recent study found that over 40% of senior citizens in the United States rely on Social Security for 50% or more of their income. One fourth of elderly married couples and 42% of elderly single people receive at least 90% of their income from Social Security benefit payments. But it is possible that an additional $2,400 per year could spell the difference between having to choose between food and medication or being able to afford both of them. Having the ability to pay for required house repairs or even just having a little more money for tiny luxuries that many of us take for granted could be the result of this. There is also the possibility that this growth will have a domino impact on the economy as a whole. The increase in the amount of money that people receiving Social Security are able to spend is beneficial to local companies and helps to drive economic growth. And when it comes to rural areas and small towns where Social Security benefits make up a larger portion of the local economy, this is of utmost significance. It right, folks, that's it for today. Make sure you keep in mind that knowledge is power, particularly when it comes to your future financial situation. Maintain your level of engagement and keep informed, and we'll see you in the next video. Let me sign off.